Alright, you guys, we're, uh, we're going to start electrical connectors today, how to properly uh, basically reproduce the, uh, the OEM style connectors instead of doing your, you know, what we call, we hate to call these junk, but our scotch locks are different connectors. We typically kind of think of these as, you know, you know uh, rigged connectors or whatnot. And so we're going to take a look at how we can actually make them at least weather, you know, better to be uh, weatherproof. And then we'll actually get into some of the Harley connectors. Um, or John Deere uses a lot of those, uh, the Deutsch connectors, and uh, how they come apart and how we build them and everything else. We're going to start with the real basics here. We got a couple different tools. This is the one that you guys got uh, that's in your snap-on kit. I like it so much because it has the cutter at the top. That's the big reason we got this one. It does have a wire stripper in here. So we want to take and match up our gauge of wire. Since we have the roll right here, what's nice is we can actually see that this is 18 gauge AWG wire. So we can match along the scale here till we get to the 18 gauge and we know that's the one we want to strip it with. We just want to go back just a little bit here about the distance we could take if we're not sure how to how far to strip it back we can figure the distance between the the two connectors here we're going to have bare wire in this first crimp and we're going to have insulation that's crimped on the second one which we'll see in a second so i can take this and see that i'd want just that amount of wire to be bare i can go back here what's that yeah that's about right Okay, I'm in my 18 gauge. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm crimped around the wire. I'm going to basically cut around it, okay, and then it'll pull off nice and easy. It didn't take any effort. Where people get into trouble is we'll grab one here. Now I'm going to go too small, and what I've done is I've actually cut the wire, so I've reduced it. What we say would happen to our connection? Resistance okay. would build up or whatnot. Now, since I didn't rotate around the wire, I'm going to have to do this. What am I actually going to do to the, the diameter of that wire when I pull on it? I'm, th I'm thinning it. I'm making it thinner if I go like this. Now, you can actually see there where we've chopped up some of the wire. Can you see the other wires that were actually cut off and how we've reduced it? Okay, so we've cut the whole thing. There's the wires in there. We don't want to do that. All we want to see is insulation. So I'm just going to start over. Now, the reason I just grabbed like a, a two-foot piece here is I'm going to go ahead, since I'm going to put ends on this, I'm going to make a jumper wire um, that I could actually use for testing or something else since we're just practicing here. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab that 18. Okay. I'm going to go all the way around with it or at least get back and forth. No effort whatsoever, right? Now on the other side here, I'm going to use an auto stripper here. And what we do here is we decide how much we want to cut off here. And then we're going to pull it and, uh, and ex take off that same amount. Can you guys see that back there? So it's grabbing the wire here and it's going to strip it nice and easy. You guys see that in the video there? Let me just do it again. And every one of these tools has a wire cutter somewhere. It's usually in the middle here. So I'm going to just do it again. Mitch, tell me if you can see this in the video. Mm -hmm. So I get the amount that I want. Does a nice job. Now this is adjustable for the tension, so you can uh, fine tune that to make it fit. The way it came out of the box is fine. This uh, I picked up at O'Reilly's the other day. It was only about 20 bucks or something like it. $15 I think is what it really was. Um, the reason I grabbed this kit is this is the, this is the set of uh, crimpers that comes out of our actual uh, really really popular terminal kit from K&L Supply. We talk about them all the time, and this is absolutely necessary in a bike shop that we have all these different um, connectors. These are the real popular ones. This one is going to actually be able to fold those uh, edges over so that we get that good factory type connection that we can't pull apart. That's why this one's so important. This one here, like I said, in your kit, just getting you some type of universal one. We've got the cutter up here. We've got um, our wire stripper. And then this one also has the end for doing spark plug wires. Okay, so this one's really handy. So Harley's about the only one where we actually put new ends on or make spark plug wires. Uh, and then uh, this one is so important because with this we can do, let's flip this over here, our more common ring terminals and butt connectors you know regardless of whether this is the ideal connector sometimes this is all we have especially if we're repairing in the field or anything else and i talked about this in class where you have your different sizes you have the uh, red 
blue and yellow and it's for the different gauges of wire. See, look at this. The 22 to 14, that's a wide range of wires, is for this one. And what we do with this, and this is brand new, you want to take and use these, you can lube these up even. And what is that powder coat that's on there? This is a very cheap pair too, it wouldn't be as fun to use. I'd recommend if you're going to do a lot of this to get a good pair. I'm going to get that in there and I crimp it down. All I have to do is match up the color. Make sense? So once again, this is for a gauge of wire. This little kit right here you guys are asking about, I got with the pliers. It came, did you see it came with a test light, a roll of electrical tape, and a wide variety of cable ties and different stuff, a little bit of wire. Um, this was 20 bucks. So pretty inexpensive. It's going to do what we need it to, need to do here. Okay. Try and get those worked up. All right, so do you see why I like to have the different tools? This is a, a cable tie. We'll see this uh, sometime here in the next couple days or so when we actually put a zip tie through here. We can pull it tight. It happens to put about the right amount of tension. Some people then like to twist it and break off the excess. I usually just get it tight and then I go back to a pair of side cutters and cut off the excess. One thing about cable ties, when you install a cable tie on something and we go around, so if I wanted to go around, I'll just go around this wire here. show you how this is. I grab around with the tool here. Okay, do you see how I just got it to where it's touching? If I go any tighter, it's going to be just like that Harley video where I'm going to potentially pinch this or strip it. One thing that's nice about this, I've had this one for, you remember how long I told you in class the other day? 18 years. Yeah, like eight, <clears throat> 18 years I've had this thing. Talk about dating me. But it's actually kind of wore out. When I go, if I try and go too tight with it, do you see how it just slips? Okay, that doesn't mean I want you going over there grabbing this thing and, you know, yanking down on it. But I have a good uh, secure connection there if I was going around a frame rail or anything else. Here's the problem that I think most people get into. You really want to think about where you strategically place this. On fuel lines, vacuum lines, anything where your hand's going to be going down. I want you to think about the operator of the motorcycle. If he's going down to reach his pet cock to turn his gas on and off, doesn't it suck if his hand has to scrape along the sharp edge every time he goes to reach for it? So you really want to think about where you place these, even for future work. The other thing I like to do is I like to get this cut as close as possible to the actual connector. And you guys know that we're all really working on being professional too. It drives me crazy when I go look at someone's bike and I see this. either way it worked upside down on that tie I hate this how many times have you guys seen this something like that that is razor sharp you get cut and the other thing is how's it look it just looks terrible it's, it's uh, completely unprofessional so there's my tips about zip ties and the actual usage of the tool good stuff your thing I recommend right away take all this stuff Make yourself a little pile, junk pile over here or whatnot, but uh, throw the stuff in the garbage. If, with this being on the floor, what's the problem? Slipping. Slipping. You guys are be telling that story about that Hayabusa that we flipped off the lift one year over one little rock on the ground. So this stuff, it isn't just clean it up later kind of attitude that usually will get you into trouble. Make sense? Okay, let's, uh, let's actually make a connector here. We've got both ends of these stripped. How do I do as far as the excess? Good. Okay, not too bad. Would you agree with me that this one's even a hair long? You know, it's it's really, really minor, but we can go ahead and trim that up if we're not happy with it. I'd go ahead and just give this a nice little twist on here. Now, one reason I want to do that first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make, let's see, which one do I want to make? I'm going to make one of these. I'm going to go, I'm going to make me. This one should be able to do, I should only need the one connector here. Now the reason I like to do these is we do a lot of back probing or whatnot in our terminals and we said that this is a good one. Remember our, uh, our alternator output? Remember how we wanted to have these rather than paper clips? So I always want to put on our waterproof connector first. It, when we go to make, we'll make one of the other ones here too, where we have a male and female here, where we're going to basically get those like that. Okay, but for right now we're just going to do one of these. 
And what I should be able to do here is I'll get uh, my connector on here. Now, I'm going to have to switch to this tool. This is the crimper. Can you actually get a close-up of these jaws to show how they have the, the little arch or the little point in there? And I can get closer to the camera if needed to. Got it? Okay. What we're going to do, uh, this is the way I like to just, I put it in the largest one. The thing you're going to notice, you see how it's half moon on one side where there's no point? That's where the back of this connector is going to go. Okay? So I preload the tool. There's a couple different ways you can do this. So I have it just sitting in the tool. Now everything's backwards for me because I'm left-handed. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and put my wire in here. And what I like to do is crimp down the insulation one first. And what that's going to do is just kind of set the stage for where my connector is going to ride. Can you see that? And actually what's happening is that, that uh, uh, connector actually rolled around that point and it folded it over. You're going to see here in the video, am I in the right space? Okay, now when I let go of this, you can see how the crimp is, nice and uh, smooth. I didn't even uh, go down very tight yet, did I? Okay, now you guys can see that. That made a great factory connector. Would you agree with me that that's duplicating what the manufacturer is doing? Absolutely. Okay, this is how we, now we didn't need any solder or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good uh, connection. Now, let's say that these ends were actually too far out. Like, I'm going to actually bend these. Let's say in, the, in the, the way it was stored or the way you got it, you can't actually get this to fit in the tool. I can't preload it because these ends are, are too large, okay? What's cool about this tool is the little, the top here, you see how I can put those in and basically close them back up? Let's see if you guys saw that. Let me actually open it up. I'm too wide that I can't actually fit in here. It won't fit in the groove, so I just flip it up here and kind of close them up a little bit. Now, did you guys see that? Do you see where I have my finger in the middle here? If I'm just like this, what am I always gonna do? I'm going to over tighten it or I'm going to end up damaging something. So I'm using this finger in here to really kind of control the plier. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to preload this again. Flip around here. I'm going to grab onto just the insulation part of it. Get started. Notice I didn't go really tight because if I screwed up and I need to move this a little bit, that's what's nice about not having it too tight. Because uh, right now if I pulled on this, could I strip this off here? Absolutely. So I'm going to move on to the next one here. Get on there. Now what I'll do a lot of times is I will switch now down to the smaller size and, uh, and really get a good connection on there. Does that make sense? Now for the insulation, I'll stay on that larger one. I'm going to flip back over here, finish this off. Let's see if we can see that in the video. Tell me if you're in the, in the right aim here to get in there. Tell me when. Yep. Okay. Crimp that up. We're good. I'm going to move down. I'm really going to get a good connection. Do you notice when I move down to how the tool, how it kind of centers in the tool? It gives me a good connection. So what I'm trying to do here is see if I can actually pull that off. And we're simulating what our customer would end up doing uh, on the motorcycle. Now on this one here, you take and just pull your connector up tight. And you would think of, now this obviously would not be on the same motorcycle. This is just for point of demonstration. But when I have another wire that would come in here, you can see how I get a nice a nice connection here and if I could actually you know insert this in all the way I'd be uh, protected all the way across what I could have done is I could have and actually should have uh, I'm gonna do it take a look here this will just make a better connection it's kind of hard when you're making jumper wires because you're normally not having to worry about this. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these uh, insulators on. Did you guys notice I was a little bit short on my protection? So if that wire were to hit a ground or something, we'd have a direct short. So I want to protect it a little bit further. I'm going to put that on. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to restrip this. What size were we? Okay. Do that. I'm going to go back to a male. I'm going to preload the tool. It's pretty fast once you just know how to operate this right oops almost the wrong way left handed of course here here down now watch this so I slide this connector up you see how I just got that whole end nice and protected now 
let's look at my assembly again. This had a lot better job. So leaving off that little protector even on this, even though it's just a, a jumper wire. So now where this is really nice is I could stick this in like my alternator connector. Would you agree that this is a really nice place, even insulated, to put an alligator clip of your voltmeter? Okay, so that's an example of how to make a crimp connector. And uh, we'll just stop right there.